The voice of God is spectacular and real at the same time. It is not the same way God speak to me, he will speak to you. I told you the common way to hear and understand the voice of God is through the inner witness. God has been speaking to us using the inner witness. And one of the easy way to understand and hear the voice of God is through the inner witness. Those who operate by the inner witness are those who easily hear and understand what God is saying at a particular time in life. Now, the audible voice of God is common and it is easy to access but also very difficult to discern because there is that thing called the audible voice of God and there is that thing also called the inner witness I have told you here before that before you can hear in the realm of the spirit you will need to be in the realm to understand or to hear from the realm of the spirit if you are not in the realm of the spirit you cannot hear from that realms for example like the example I said the last time, when a goat is crying, to you, that goat may be crying, but to another goat, that goat is communicating. When a sip is blatting, to you, that sip is blatting, but to another sip, that sip is communicating. When a dog is barking, to you, that dog is barking, but to another dog, that dog is communicating. Until you are in the realms of that dog, you can hear the noise, but you can't interpret it. You can discern what the sip is saying. So hearing is different from discernment. For you to be able to discern the voice of God, you need to be in the realm of the spirit and in the realms of God to discern the voice of God. So there are many people that hear God, but they can't discern whether that is God or not. That is why for you to be able to discern his voice, you must be in his realms. Just like I said the last time, if we are communicating here and there is a dog here, the dog will not even know that we are talking about hearing the voice of God. What the dog will think is that the dog may think that we are just talking. The dog can hear the noise, but he may not be able to understand what we are saying. But there are some people, they are able to train the dogs and bring them from the realms of dogs to the realms of human beings. That when they tell the dog, come, the dog can come. And when they say go, the dog can go. They can tell the dog to go and pick a phone and the dog will pick the phone and come. There are even some dogs I saw on social media. I like following them. They will send them to go and do shopping to come. It's not a fallacy. It's not a movie. It is real because the dog has been trained and has been schooled to have and to understand the language of men. So because of that training and that school, that dog can easily relate with men. So your local dog that don't hear the language of men is because the dog is not trained to understand men. During this series, somebody went and put a comment on Facebook that there's nothing like steps to hearing the voice of God. A born again believer can hear the voice of God. So we should preach Christ and stop preaching heresies. Well, that's fine. I didn't comment. The same way I hear the voice of God, the one commenting cannot hear that voice of God that way. Are we not all born again? So what is the difference that I can hear more than you? Is it that God is a respecter of person? The Bible said God is not a respecter of person. He is the same God both to the Jews and the Gentiles. Both to the white man and the black man, he's the same God. It's just that you need to know, you have to learn the principles. Because God is a God that if you want to relate with him, you don't just relate with him anyhow. You can't just go and sit on the chair of Nana Akufo Addo and say because you have a relationship with him. That seat is for a president. If you're not a president, you don't sit there. No matter your relationship with him, you are not permitted to sit on that chair. So, even in relating with God, you must know how to relate with him. If not, you will not know how to, to host him for a, a, a long period of time. And that has been the problem of people. They think that there is no way you should learn to understand and to start hearing the voice of God. But it's not true. There is a way. How come that a dog, there are some dogs that can hear the language of men and some dogs cannot hear the language of men? The training, the schooling. So there is a school you must go through that after that school you can understand the language of men. There are people who understand French, is that not it? And they are not French speaking country. The English we are speaking is not our mother tongue. We have learned it. If my mother or my father is here, they will not understand what I'm saying. They can hear my voice, but they can't discern the words. They can't understand the words. Why? Because my mother and my father is not in the realms of English language. It takes a man who is in the realms of English language to understand English language. If I switch into my local dialect and begin to speak Mampusi, you will not understand because you are not in that realms. And then to their train, no one was born growing up speaking a language. We are trained to speak that language. And as you are trained, 
you are able to walk in that language. Same in the realm of the spirit. You need to be schooled. You need to be trained on how to speak it. You need to be trained on how to hear him. I told you that there are materials that have made up of God. And that is love, grace, and mercy. These have come together to form God. The nature of God is love. Until you love, you cannot hear God. You can be in the realm of the spirit and don't love. Now, and in the, the realm of the spirit is different from the realm of God. In the realm of the spirit, you are permitted to hear and understand languages of spirits. But before you can understand the language of God, you must be in God's realm. And God's realm is love. That is why I told you that first requirement to hearing the voice of God is that you must love. Because God is love. And he who loveth know God. And he who do not love do not know God. So until you love, you don't know God. The proof that you know God. It's not the tongues you speak. It's not the charisma. It's not how long you preach. It's not how people are being healed from wheelchairs. It's not how you prophesy. But it's the amount of love you demonstrate in the life of people. That is the proof that you love, you know God. Because those who know God carry the nature of God. And the nature of God is love. So that is why everyone who is here, your first step to hearing God is love. Now, I'm just establishing the introduction. Because we are talking about the audible voice of God. Now, God speaks differently all the time. For example, okay, 1 Kings 17 verses 6 to 7. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. There have been what? No rain in the land. Elijah was a prophet of God. Let me read another scripture. Elijah was a prophet of what? God. And ravens were bringing him food in the morning and in the evening to eat and drink. And he was drinking from the brook, eating from ravens. God commanded ravens to feed Elijah. But the brook dried up. The prophet was by the brook and the brook still dried up. <laughs> the prophet was by the brook and the brook what? still dried up. If the prophet wanted to demonstrate his anointing, he was going to die. We are not kept by how anointed we are. We survive by the obedience to the voice of God. Amen. Your anointing cannot make you survive. What will make you survive is your obedience to the voice of God. Anointing can fail sometimes, but the voice of God can never fail. That is why it is important you must hear the voice of God. We are not exalting. Look, every Christian is called to hear God's voice. Don't let prophets dirty the office to understand you don't want to hear from God. Prophets are not your license to hear God. Apostles are not your license to hear God. Pastors are not your license to hear God. The one you need to hear God is the Holy Ghost and He has been given to you. You don't need a prophet to hear the voice of God. Now, listen. Now, when the brook dried up, Elijah never commanded water to appear. Kiba, Zadi, Baradia. Do you know that it was the same prophet who locked the heavens? The prophet who locked the heavens can open the heavens under the, he can make the brook give water. Look at the history of Elisha. They came to Elisha. King Jehoshaphat and Co came to Elisha. And Elisha gave the prof a, a prophecy. He said, Dig ditches. You shall not hear the sound of rain. But before the following day, the ditches shall be full of rain, water. And the Bible said they dig ditches. And the following day, the ditches were full of what? Water. Elisha was a product of Elijah. So if Elisha can command water to come out of wells and then dried holes, then Elijah can do better. But Elijah never commanded water to come out of the brook. He listened to the voice of God. The second, what is the Lord saying? And the Lord from the brook, Look at what the Lord said. The Bible said the next verse, verse 7 said, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and there and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to sustain thee. Elijah have to leave that place and go to another place. God said, I have commanded a widow there to sustain thee. So his survival was based on the voice of God. It was not based on the name he carried. It was not based on the title or the anointing. You live long based on your obedience to God's voice, not your anointing. Anointing or gifting can fail you, but the voice of God will always lead you to the right destinations. That is why you need the voice of God. If a major prophet like Elijah could listen to what, the, what is the next step, never be used to one way God is speaking to you. The plans of God can change any day and any time. He's a God who changes his, his methods all the time without consulting any man. When Elijah got there, he was sustained by what? 
the widow. So now I want you to know that the audible voice of God sometimes can it is spiritual, but it has an effect on the natural realms. It is a spiritual voice, but have an effect on the natural realms. In other words, God normally speaks from the spiritual realms, but the spiritual voice will have a vibration because it is a spiritual voice. It has a vibration, and that vibration has an effect on the natural realms. So as that vibration gives an effect on the natural realms, that is where we begin to hear it. So the audible voice of God is still spiritual, but the vibration is what makes it what? A natural hearing up. That gives us a natural hearing ability. So whenever God speaks in that manner, people can hear, but many may not be able to discern it. So the audible voice of God, many people have heard it, but they are not able to discern it. After today, you will realize that you have heard the voice of God before audibly. It's just that you were not able to discern it. I have heard God spoke to me audibly several times. And whenever God is speaking to me audibly, it looks like the voice of a human being. Sometimes it resembles a voice I respect and submit to. Very audibly. Just like me speaking to you. If you submit to me and then if you respect and honor the anointing upon my life. If the Lord is coming to speak to you audibly. You are likely to hear the voice of God audibly even in your dream. Like I am the one speaking to you. That is God speaking. The Bible said in the book of Acts. The chapter 9 verses 3 to 4. And as he journeyed. He came near Damascus, and suddenly there shone round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Saul heard the audible voice of God. Saul, why persecuted thou me? Verse 7. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Come. Now, you see. God met him and when God met him the Bible said in the middle of the day it was around 12 noon when a bright light shined from heaven and he fell off the horse and he heard a voice Saul why persecuted thou me and Saul heard the voice and saw the man he was talking to but the Bible said the people that was with him they heard the voice but they heard no man speaking now let me tell you how the Bible contradicts itself wait don't go <laughs> now, Acts 22 verse 7 Acts 22 verse 7 Look at what Paul Paul was now telling the apostle What happened And he said And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And I answered, who are you Lord? And he said to me I am Jesus of Nazareth who you are persecuting Now those who were with him saw the light But did not hear the voice of the one who was speaking to me Somebody just missed something you missed something, right? Okay, let's go back and count. <laughs> I want you to get it by your own self. I don't want to tell you. Now, in Acts chapter 9, verses 3 to 4, the Bible said, As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, So, why persecuted thou me? Okay, the verse 7 said, The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, Hearing the voice, but seeing no one. And then Acts 22 verse 7 said, And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecuted. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not what? Hear the voice of the one who was speaking to me. In one verse, the Bible said what? They hear him speaking. But they didn't see the one talking. In another verse, the Bible said they saw the light but didn't hear him speaking. <laughs> so, can the Bible contradict itself? No. But what happened? Which means somebody caught a revelation here. Paul caught a the revelation. They saw the light but didn't hear the one that was speaking to me. The people that were with him, they heard the voice. That's in the, according to Acts chapter 9. They heard the voice, but they didn't see the one speaking. In Acts 22, according to Paul's report, his own report, he said they saw the light, but they didn't hear the voice. Which means Paul has caught the revelation that for you to understand and hear somebody, you must understand what the person is communicating. So far as you only hear the sound and don't understand, means that 
you are not in that person's realms. The same way a dog can be hearing me and don't understand. It doesn't mean the dog is hearing me. He's only hearing sound. So I can say that there were five people here plus three dogs. All of them heard my voice. But only the five people understood me because they were in my realms. The other dogs were not in my realms. As I am talking to you right now, there are some of you who don't hear me. And the reason why you don't hear me is because you are not in my realms. You, you don't hear me. You are just hearing sound. Some of you are waiting for prophecies. So you are not in my realms. So a man of God can come here and preach and finish and go home. And you will meet somebody on the street and say, what did the man of God say? They can't remember why. They were not in the realms of the man of God. The same way you can hear a dog barking. But you need an ability. You need to be in the realms of the dog to hear what the dog is saying. After you say, suck him, he's making noise. No, he's communicating. You can see a sheep bleating. And the child is around the station. And he will bled, the child will bled, bled, the child will bled. And they are running towards each other. They are not making noise, they are communicating. Where are you? I'm here. Take the road, come here, meet me here. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Finally, they will meet. It is communication. To you, you said they are making noise. No, you are not in their realms. So the voice of God, the audible voice of God is spiritual. So whenever it is spoken from the realm of the spirit, it has a vibration. And that vibration gives it a natural effect. And when that vibration gives it a natural effect, men in the natural realms can hear it, but they will only need to discern it. You only need to be in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of God, to know what God is saying. The same God speaking to Paul and the other people. Paul understood and heard him, but the others only heard the sound. And they said what? We heard the sound, but we didn't see the guy. We heard, we heard him speak. What was he saying? They don't know. The Bible said, John 12, 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by heard it and said that it had tended. Father, glorify thy name. This was a prayer of Jesus. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by heard it and said that it had tended. Jesus told the Father to glorify his name. And the Lord spoke back and said, I have glorified it. And I will glorify it the second time. And I will glorify it again. Jesus and the apostle heard what Jesus, what God was saying. But the crowd, that was always following Jesus. They, what, they said it has tended. Some people heard him. And the voice was, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. That was a response from God with an audible voice. The apostles and Jesus, those who were in the realms of Jesus and in the realms of God, heard it and said, it. God said, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. But the crowd who was following for miracle meal, the crowd who was always following for healing, for miracles, for prophecies, said that it has tended. So the same voice, people heard it differently. Why is it that Jesus and the apostle heard it and the crowd said it was tender? Tender. The difference is the crowd was not in the realms of God to hear the audible voice of God. But Jesus and the apostle was in God's realms. So which means the apostle have walked with God to understand Jesus taught them how to pray. He taught them how to have a personal relationship with God. He taught them how to have access to the voice of God. To understand that when God now speaks, they can also hear but the crowd was not in that realms. You can be in church and still don't hear his voice. You can be in church and hear the audible voice, but you are not able to discern it. You don't know what it stands for. You don't know what it means. You don't know what it is standing for. So you will say it, it tended. We say we were in church and all of a sudden we heard noise, noise, noise. What is noise? That was an audible voice of God. Do you know that God can speak using the organ keys as he's playing? I can hear the voice of God. You'll be hearing keys whilst I'm hearing God's voice. If you are in the realms, you will also descend the keys. You are hearing keys, but I'm hearing a voice. You are hearing a, a guitar, but I'm hearing a voice. You are hearing drums, I'm hearing a voice. People will be speaking in tongues. God will give you interpretation to the tongues. You are hearing tongues, but another person is hearing a voice. The realms. You have to invite yourself to that realms. How many of you? You are just walking, all of a sudden you heard your name, Paul. You turned, there was no one. And in their village, we believe in superstition. When they mention your name and you respond, they say, Oi, you are dead. 
If you are lucky, you didn't respond. You say, Aflow, which means back to sender. <laughs> I know all of you are victims of that. Is that not right? The name resembles somebody you know. And in the village, you say, that person is a witch. The name can resemble your father. You will respond only to go to your father. And your father say, I have not called you. Igata, Zadia. That is why you need a father who is enlightened. To help you access the voice of God. Your father may say, I have not called you. And you go back. Five days time, you come again. Your father will say, what is wrong with you? Do you need... So we send you to a psychiatric hospital. One man time, your father will say, you are sick. Stop hearing voices. But... For Ila, he knows that someone was not sick, but that was God speaking to the guy. <laughs> he knows that someone was not sick, but that was God. So the one who interprets your voice determines who you continue to hear from. How many of you have heard that voice before? Somebody just mentioned your name and you don't know the one who mentioned it. Yeah. Ah, who is that? There was no one. Your name was mentioned in the realm of the spirit. And as it was missing in the realm of the spirit, there was a vibration. And because you were at the wavelength of God, you heard your name, but you couldn't discern who was calling you. And because you couldn't discern who was calling you, you were not able to access that voice. And one thing about God is that until you respond, he will not speak next. I will show you how to respond to the voice of God. Amen. Now let me tell you something. The audible voice of God is a spiritual voice. And before you can hear it, you need to be in the realm of the spirit to hear it. Your spiritual state determines whether you hear the audible voice of God or not. Your spiritual state determines whether you hear the audible voice of God or not. Uh, that was two days ago. I, I, I was in the house um, with my wife. We were sitting at the hall. And there was an angel standing by the fridge. And she was going to open and remove water. I said, there is an angel there. She screamed and came back and sat down. <laughs> she said, she's not going again. <laughs> I said, can't you see the angel? I pointed at the angel. She can see nothing. The angel changed her position and went to another corner. I said, look there. Can't you see the angel? She saw nothing. An angel was standing. Now. You need to zoom. In the realm of the spirit, there's something we call zooming. I'll teach you the code of zooming. We call it the code of gazing. <laughs> if you take a camera and you look at an empty atmosphere, there's nothing in the atmosphere. But as you continue zooming the camera, you see that you begin to see particles. Some things begin to appear. As you are zooming, you are bringing those objects in view. So there's a way we zoom to see an angel, which means we are bringing the angel, we are materializing the angel from the realm of the spirit to the physical, where you can see him face to face. It's either you materialize to the spiritual or you materialize him to the physical. This was the understanding Enoch had, that he walked with God and was not, for the Lord took him. He could bump into angels and say, how are you? Sorry sir, where are you from? Say, I'm an angel, which angel? You bump into me and you say, it's possible. Now, there's a spiritual condition in hearing the voice of God. You must be spiritually well conditioned to hear the voice of God. Those of you who think that to hear the voice of God is to finish eating banquet and do eh, eh, drink water and lie there and say, Father, speak. You are a joker. You have to be in his realms to, be, to hear him. So, which means whatever will stop you from hearing God, you must do away with it. Number one, love. It's a factor to hear the audible voice of God. Sir, you must love. If you do not walk in love, eh, and you are always with that mentality that every witch around you will die. Every witch fighting my destiny, die by fire. It is that mentality our fathers have impacted in us. That when a voice calls us, we don't hear it as the voice of God. We hear it as the voice of a witch. When somebody mentions your name, Isaac, you said, every witch fighting my destiny, die by fire. Why? You are not walking in love. You are walking in fear. You are walking in anger. You are ready to kill. You are ready to destroy. So one of the qualifications of you hearing the audible voice of God is love. Because until you love, you will interpret the voice of God as the voice of the devil. Because put yourself in the shoe of someone. If you were the ones, you heard the voice of your spiritual father once. You go to say, I didn't call you. Second, I didn't call you. Third, I didn't call you. Fourth, I didn't call you. And the man now perceives 
that it was God speaking to this gentleman. You first one, you will not even come to me. You say every witch, this is a voice of the enemy. How come I'm hearing an audible voice? So your mentality determines how you hear God. Your state, your, your spiritual state, the condition of which you are determine how you access the voice of God. In that condition is hatred. Even if you hear the voice of any other person, you think that it is the voice of the devil. Maybe it is witches against you. It is your enemy against you. Deal with your heart. Walk in love. A man who walks in love is a man who can access God at any time and any dimension. Walk in love. Because love cast away all fears. Do you know that if you are always afraid, it will be hard for you to access God's voice. If you are always angry, an angry man is a dangerous man. The reason why when I'm prophesying to people right here, sometimes I'll say, lift a song for me. Those who are sharp and very intelligent will know that that atmosphere has been contaminated. It's either I shouted at a, somebody at the music area or an usher or somebody have done something i didn't like it so immediately i am taken off from the realm of the spirit to the physical so when i say lift up a song for me i'm trying to gain my way back i'm trying to gain access again to the realm of the spirit it's not for play it's not for jokes i'm trying to gain access again why because maybe you know especially you'll be here all of a sudden you know they are playing with the music you get it with that you can easily fall down. That is why as a man of God, you must be determined and you must purpose in your heart never to get angry. As you said, when you are doing ministry. So an angry man who is angry and still talking is a man who has not heard from God. Because if you have heard from God, you cannot still be angry and still be talking. Because whenever you get angry, it takes you, it disqualifies you from the realm of the from the realms of God and brings you down to the physical. Because anger is, the, is, a, is a product of the flesh. Hatred is a product of the flesh. So you can't be in the flesh and still hear from God. Before you can hear from God, you must walk away from the flesh. These are some of the small, small things you need to know so that you can start assessing the voice of God. Some of you think that they have to wash your face with anointing oil, pour palm oil on you, soak you in dirty oil, and then put you in coffin, you'll sleep three days. No. Are you a, a, an occultic man? You don't need to carry instruction to hear the voice of God. You need to be trained. Because we see by light. We don't see by instruction. We see by what? Light. In the realm of the spirit, we need two things to see. Two ingredients. Light and then the eye. And the light is the word of God. It's the knowledge of God. It is the enlightenment. It is the understanding. You see by light. There's no instruction. There's no concoction that can make you start hearing the audible voice of God. The only concoction is the light. The understanding of the word of God. Do away with anger, anxiety. There are sometimes when I'm prophesying, you see me tell somebody, I say, take great step backward. It's not for joke. I'll say, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Because I have discerned unforgiveness in the life of that person. I have discerned that the spirit the person is carrying is not good for my environment. So I must separate my environment from her environment. Because if I share the same environment with that individual, I'll also lose the ability to hear from God. That is why some prophets will be prophesying all of a sudden, boom, they stop hearing the voice of God. They don't know how to separate their environment from the environment of the congregation. That is why sometimes we go to the congregation, bring the individual to in the front to prophesy. Sometimes I can start prophesying to somebody, all of a sudden I say, follow me. Because there are people there, once they are dead, they are worried. Once they are there, they are, they are crying. Once they are dead, they are sad. Once they are dead, they are having different type of spirits. And they have saturated their environment with their spirit. So for me to hear from God, I must be able to control my environment. So to control my environment, I must me, I must work on myself. Make sure that that environment is an environment full of love. That is why when I'm prophesying, I'm cracking jokes. The reason why I, cry, I can crack jokes and continue, I want you to laugh and forget the past. Forget yesterday, forget the pain. As you forget the pain before you realize, I'm going deeper, deeper, deeper. I'm controlling the environment. <laughs> so somebody will say, hey, prophet, why is that you, you, when you are prophesying, you crack jokes? Because I want the people to flow with me. You will discover, those of you who observe, you discover that when I'm prophesying to somebody and the person starts to cry, I stop. Because I don't like emotional environments. I want exciting environment. That is why a prophet will say, scream, I can't hear you, shout. Because as you are shouting and you are screaming, you are forgetting about house, your house things. As you are shouting and you are shouting, you are transferring, you are changing the environment to a prophesying environment. As you keep doing that, it will get to a point the prophet will say, stop, you will stop. You start to prophesy. 
you start to prophesy. You start to prophesy. The prophet may not even understand it. Some prophets do it, but they don't even know that this is what they are doing. But they are changing the environment. There are four steps in descending in the realm of the spirit. The first step is you must first of all position yourself. After you position yourself, you must calm your spirit. That's the second step. Calming your spirit. After calming your spirit, the third step is that you must clear your mind. After clearing your mind, the fourth step is that you must control your environment. And after you control the environment, the last thing is that wait for a spontaneous voice from God. If I show you how to do this thing, some of you will say, eh, I will start ministry, prophetic ministry international. The spiritual condition of you hearing the voice of God is that you must walk in love. Love cast away fear. It cast away anger. It cast away hatred. It cast away anxiety. It cast away worry. Love can take away all these things. Because if you are worried, a man who is worried cannot hear from God. God can speak and you find it very hard to hear him. First Samuel 3, 2. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight has begun to grow dim, so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had yet had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down within the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, where, here I am. And ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lied down again. And the voice called again, Samuel, Samuel. And he arose again and went to Eli. And he said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. My son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli said, Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Samuel was lying down within the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Where the ark of God was. Not on the laps of the girlfriend. Not on the laps of a woman. Where the ark of God was. You all know the act of God. I wrote a book, How to Prophesy in Five Minutes. I finished it. That was um, on, on Thursday. When the book is out, grab a copy. The Bible said, Delilah deceived Samson for how many times? Three times. He will ask Samson, where is your secret? Samson will say this. She will try when he didn't when She, she will call people and they will come. And Samson will do gr -gr 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 -gr, and fight all of them. Bring them down. Fought all of them one by one. The second time he did, Samson will overcame them. The third time he overcame them and the lady now got angry and something now revealed his secret. The Bible said, and when they cut the hair of something, the Lord departed. When I read that scripture I said, keep party laba. Thank God for the revelation. Which means the Lord didn't, all that while they were trying something, the Lord didn't depart. All that while he was lying on the laps of Delilah, the Lord never departed. The Lord only departed when the hair was cut down. So if the Lord didn't depart, how come that the Lord didn't tell Samson that Delilah is about to kill you? Be careful, Samson. No, the Lord spoke, but the environment couldn't allow the voice of God to get to Samson. Be careful of wrong environments. A room, you are lying down where the girl is not your own. Be careful. No matter how sharp you are in the prophetic, when the Lord speaks, you will not hear. Now, when I heard that, place that and the Lord departed from something after the hair was cut. I said, so all this while the Lord didn't depart. So how come that the Lord didn't tell something? If he didn't depart, why is it that something didn't hear him? He spoke just that the environment. There are some people, if you are with them, you will never hear the voice of God. There are some particular individual you can never hear the voice of God with them. God will speak yet. They have the ability to, to silence and to, and to neutralize the voice of God in the life of a believer. Run away from wrong environments. It can stop you from hearing the audible voice of God. If you go to a funeral ground and you are laughing, they will say something is wrong with you. Is that not right? Why are you laughing? Is it that you are happy that our, our, our brother or our sister have died? You can't laugh at a funeral ground no matter how happy you are. Even if you won a lot of 10 million Ghana cities at the funeral ground, you must do chup. You must hide and laugh because that money cannot be compared to the life that is lost. But if you get to a wedding ground and you are crying, they will also say you are a wicked man. Why is that everyone is laughing and you are crying? What happened? Environments. Environments. So there are some environments you are supposed to laugh. Some environments you are supposed to what? Cry. So if you are in an environment of a funeral ground and you want to laugh, it's impossible. Go to the wedding ground. So there are some environments you can never hear the voice of God no matter how anointed you are. God himself will not speak to you. Even if God speaks, you won't hear. 
How come that God told Elijah to go to the mountain? He want to have a meeting with him. The Bible says, and the Lord appeared to Ezekiel and invited him to a place of honor that he may have a meeting with him. Because God knows that that environment you are, you can't hear him. So those days you see prophets climbing mountains, it was not for joke. Those days you see prophets climbing mountains was that they were trying to separate themselves from some environments. There are friends you should cut off, let them speak, cut them off. Anyone who, who kill your ability to hear the voice of God is, is a threat to your destiny. Cut them off. Let them go. If there is a girlfriend in your life, the day you started dating her, you can no longer hear from God. Cut her off. If there is a boy, that is not making you hear the voice of God. Why are you still in the relationship? And some people will come to me, I have been dating her for four years now. I want to know if she is the will of God. Four years. You are now coming to inquire if she is the will of God. So even if she is not the will of God. No, what did you use the four years for? So when people say, eh, I want to know if she is as we said, when men of God came, who come to me and said, eh, Prophet, I've been dating this lady. I said, uh-huh. I want you to really help me. Eh? I said, uh-huh. I want to know if she's the will of God. So you stop hearing from God. Cut her off. A lady that can kill your ability to hear God is not for you. A man that can kill your ability to hear from God is not for you. Never exchange anything to the voice of God. The voice of God is your sure security. It is your sure security. It is what guarantees your destination. A man of God who don't hear from God is sure to fail. He's certain to fail. You can't do it without God. So where was someone in the temple lying close to the ark of God? The presence of the ark of God carries the presence of God. Your environment determines your accessibility to the voice of God. Where you lie determines who you hear. What you hear is influenced by the environment you are lying in. If you hear Azumto, it's because you are close to entertainment ground. If you hear Al-Qaeda, one corner, it's, it's based on the environment you are. You can come here and hear Shatawale. If you are in this church, you hear my voice. If you go to Shatawale show, you hear Shatawale voice. You can't be at Shatawale show and be trying to hear my voice. It's not possible. Your environment determines what you hear. And what you hear determines how you live. And how you live determines how men honor you. So I told you, first requirement is what? Love. Second one is what? Environment. 